you know, they gave me a, a, a Sunday service. Uh, uh, it's how everything breaks out in the time limit that you have on everything. Uh, like the last song I knew was going to take uh, four minutes. And I looked down at the bottom and it said dismissal, two o'clock. I thought, wow, this is really exciting. This is going to be good. But uh, they said, no, Dale, that means you've got two minutes to dismiss when, when it's time for us to go and you you got two minutes. So uh, uh, that sort of popped my uh, bubble there. But uh, I, I'm excited to be here. Uh, one of the things that we need to uh, do that we, we, we didn't do in here is uh, yet is, is to read the scripture that we're going to be in today. This is a great scripture. It's, it's a, a very familiar scripture to uh, most of us. Uh, we've been working in, in Philippians, and last week, uh, Pastor John, was uh, he ended up in verse 20. So this week, we are in uh, starting at verse 21 and going through 26. Let me read that to you, and, and then uh, let's charge into it. For me, to li- for me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. You ought to circle fruitful labor. And I do not know which to choose, for I am hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that your proud confidence in me may abound in Christ Jesus through my coming to you again. There is a a ton of information in these few verses. There's a lot of different directions that we can go with this, uh, but uh, we're going to pick one and and head in that direction. And I've even got a couple of questions that uh, I'll ask you. And then I'll ask you uh, during the the time that that we're speaking is that uh, uh, you think about them. And then by the end of the 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 service that uh, you'll have an answer. Well, let me get started with this. In 1993, while fishing in St. Mary's Glacier, Colorado, Bill Jiraki got his leg pinned under a boulder. Snow was in the forecast that he was without a jacket, a pack, or communication. And in a desperate attempt to survive, he used his flannel shirt as a tourniquet, and then he used his fishing knife to cut off his own leg at the knee joint. He used hemostats from his fishing kit to clamp the bleeding arteries, and then he crab walked to his truck and drove himself to the hospital. This particular one I saw on television. In 2003, Aaron Ralston had a similar experience. While hiking in Utah, a boulder fell and pinned his right arm. After various attempts to get free, on the sixth day of being stuck there, he amputated his right forearm with a dull multi-tool Exhausted, dehydrated, he rappelled down a 60-foot cliff, and he hiked eight miles before finding a Dutch family who guided him to a rescue helicopter. He eventually made it to the hospital and survived. He wrote an autobiography later titled, Between a Rock and a Hard Place. What do these two stories teach us? aside from providing some, some good uh, basic tips for uh, adventure uh, uh, recreation. They teach us that humans will do remarkable things in order to live. We'll spend money on the best, doc- <clears throat> best doctor, take up disciplined eating habits, move to a particular climate, and even cut off body parts to live. So in this world, we've seen what people will do to to live. So perhaps the question for us to answer at this point is, what do we live for? What do we live for? How long will we live? We don't know that. Uh, Life is uh, different for different people. Perhaps uh, now would be a good time to ask ourselves, 
what really are we living for? What are you living for? Ask yourself that as you think about that for the next uh, 25, 35, 45, 55, no, for the next half hour. Uh, ask yourself, uh, what, are we, what are we really living for? As we have been reading in Romans, we find the Apostle Paul in prison, and he's writing to us uh, some of the epistles that, that he does at, at that time. But the one that we want to camp on right now is verse 21. This is, this is it, because this summarize is what Paul says. For me, for to me, to live is Christ, and to guy is gain. You see, this is Paul's heartbeat. This is his life philosophy. This is what drives him. This is a singleness of Paul. This is his singleness of purpose in life. And you notice how he starts the verse, for me. This is for Paul. This may not be for you, it may not be for me, but it's for him. This is his purpose. This is what, what he does. So um, uh, I, I want you to be thinking about this as we go through here, as you ask yourself, what really am I living for? What really am I living for? And the other question that I would like you to, to uh, write or ask at some point is, uh, for me to live is what? Some would write, for me to live is golf. Uh, some would write, for me to live is entertainment. Some would write, for me to live is just vacationing. So I want you to think about that. In, in verse 22, as we look at 22, Paul says, but if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me, and I do not know what to choose. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind that uh, Paul's in prison, and as, as a result of being there, the gospel is going forward. He mentioned last week, as Pastor uh, uh, John was telling us, that uh, because Paul was in prison, there are people that, of his group that wanted to, to bring a little more pain and punishment on him. And he said, for envy and, and jealousy and strife, they wanted to make things more difficult for me. So they're preaching the gospel. And then there are others that are doing the work that Paul's doing because Paul can't do it. He's, he's locked up. He, he can't be out preaching and teaching. So they're taking his place. Paul said, so no matter what, I rejoice because the gospel is being preached. He, wasn't, he didn't care about the motives of the people that were trying to bring more pain and discomfort in Paul's life. He was happy because the, 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 the gospel was going forth. And the, the, the gospel was reaching hearts and lives as a result of, of Paul being in prison. And so you ask yourself, what is Paul living for? He, he's living, he's living because his desire is to push the gospel to believers. Somewhere along the line, Paul made a resolve, and his resolve was much like Daniel. Paul resolved that he's going to serve God, that he's going to serve others. This is resolve in his life. In, in Daniel, uh, when in the life of Daniel, when he was taken captivity in, in Babylon, and he was brought to Babylon, and they were supposed to eat the king's food, which was great food. But Daniel knew that uh, it was uh, had been offered to idols, and he wasn't supposed to be eating that. So Scripture says, and I think it's verse eight of chapter one, uh, he said, uh, "I purposed in my life." my heart, that I would not sin against God, that I, I would not defile my body. This is the resolve that they have. So I, I ask us to ask, when I ask you to ask, I ask myself too, what have we purposed in our life for Christ? You, you know, you look and you say, well, most, most of the people here are believers. Uh, so what have you purposed as you've decided that you're going to follow Christ? How have you decided that you're going to live? What are you really living for? Uh, Paul is serving others. Uh, I, I wanted to give you uh, just a, a brief update on, you, you know, we have this, this new ministry. It's called Team Care. And we are uh, asking people to be a part of taking care of you all, the body, taking care of the body. And we have, uh, now we have, right now we have 50 people 
that are signed up to help, to take care of people. And that has been growing, it's been growing leaps about people are excited about helping each other. And they come back and tell us what a blessing it was to be sent out on a task to help other people. And uh, yesterday, to give you an example, uh, my wife had a group of uh, young teens out. It's even down to the teens. She had four boys, and one of them brought uh, their dad, his dad with them. And they raked yards for uh, a more mature lady in our group. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a time of excitement. They were having a very good time serving one another. That's why I ask you to, to circle uh, fruitful labor, because God has called each one of us to bear fruit wherever he's put us. Wherever God has put you, you need to be bearing fruit. That's what God expects of us. That's what Christ asks us to do, is to bear fruit, not to bear much fruit even. So we have 50 people that are helping others in the body. By the way, uh, we still have just a couple spots left that you can sign up. And, and this week, probably this week only, there's no charge on signing up. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, we'll, we'll forgive that charge. But... It's exciting to see people do that. That's bearing fruit. That's bearing fruit, folks. And that's what Paul is doing here. He's, he's bearing fruit, where he's, even in prison. So one of the things that uh, should be brought out in here is that, you know, even uh, there are times that you and I go through some really difficult circumstances. And Paul is going through a difficult time right now. But even in the difficult circumstances, God's work can go on. It can go on. And it does. And in Paul's life, there are other people that are, are pitching in to help. Uh, in the life of people here in the church, when their difficulty reaches their life, others need to step out, step up, and reach out and help. We're getting some, some calls back from people. Uh, when they finish it, we give them a task. And when they finish that task, they date it and sign it and turn it back and say, this task has been, this task has been completed. And the, the messages that we're getting back, what a joy it was uh, to, for us to participate, not to mention the person that they've done the task for. We, we have uh, probably eight or nine people that have signed up for uh, transportation. They will take people that, that need to go to the doctor. They'll take them to go to the doctor. They take them to take meals to them. So it's that type of participation. It's that type of fruit that's being bared. And that's part of what we should be doing. That's part of what's happening here in Paul's life. But he's, he's coming up to something now that uh, uh, he, he's not sure. But the, the question I want to ask you is, where has God put you? And what are you doing where he's put you? What are you doing with your life? Is it just for you? Or is, are you sharing the news of Jesus with other people? Are you sharing God's love? And that's something that's important to us, is, is to bear fruit. Now, what Paul has come up against right now is that he says, but if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me, and I don't know which to choose. He's He's now entered a time where he's got dilemma in his life. He doesn't know what to do. He says, I don't know whether I, 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 I need to die or whether I need to uh, uh, stay because others need, to, others need my help. So he's, he's looking at this. He doesn't know where. He says he's, he even uses the word, I am hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. So this is where he's at. He said, I, can, I, I, can, I would just as soon depart and be with Christ because that is much better. See, Paul's not, he's not uh, afraid of dying. He's not worried about dying because death is not a fear to him. I love the last song that we, that we sang. I think it was the last song we sang. Uh, death gives way to victory. Death gives way to victory, and that's what happens when death takes it. You and I have no reason to be afraid of dying, because after dying, that's when, if you, as a believer, you, you meet Jesus. So it's a time that um, Paul knows that he's not afraid of dying. 
He's ready, to, he's ready to die, and he understands that for a believer, there's no fear in death. There should be no fear in death. Uh, Paul knows that as immediately upon dying, he's going to go into the presence of, of Jesus, and that will make all the difference uh, in the world to, to, to Paul. He only wants to serve Christ while he's where God has put him. And right now, God has put him in prison. God has allowed him to be put into prison. And as a result of that, the work is being done. So when you're in an affliction and you're in the middle of, uh, uh, call it deep doo-doo, when you're in that area, ask yourself, is, is the gospel going forth? Am I, am I still showing and demonstrating my faith and trust in Christ? even though it's a difficult time that I'm experiencing, remember that God is still in control no matter what kind of a situation you're in. God's in control here during this, and Paul knows that, and he's not worried about that. He's worried about making this decision. He says, I am hard-pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Yet, in verse 24, he said, to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. To remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. So this shows us another picture of Paul, and it shows us how unselfish Paul is. He, he said, I really, my desire is to be with Christ, but it's more necessary that I stay and teach you. That's what you need so there's a, a picture of Paul and his, his unselfishness because he's more concerned about other people. So let me uh, uh, give you some information here about, because Paul talks about dying all the time, and I want to ease your feelings. You, by the way, I don't know if this is new information. You all are going to die. We all are. At some point, we're going to die. Each and every one of us have an expiration date. I don't know what it is, but we're, we're going to die at some point. And we, we, shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't worry about that. God's still in control of that. But I want you to think about this. You know, you don't really ever die. Now, you can quit breathing here, and at some point, you and I are going to take our last breath here on earth, and that'll be it. The, the history of our life here on earth will be gone when we take our last breath. But when you take that next breath, that very next breath will be taken where you're going to spend eternity. And if you're a believer, you're going to spend that, that very next breath is going to be with Jesus. As a matter of fact, if you just take a breath, then go, <sighs> now take another breath. And see, that, that, that next breath that we just took, that's a gift from God. But someday, there won't be that next breath here on earth. That next breath will be taken in the presence of Jesus. That's why Paul's not worried. He, when, you, when you die, he says, to die for me is gain. You know, that's a verse that you hear almost every time at, at a funeral. To die is gain. And the family wonders, I don't see what gain there is here. Well, it's not about you, I'm sorry. It's about the one that has just passed away because they're now in their new surroundings. You know, the only thing that changes that it's your, when you die, when they say that you're, you're dead, is your location. You're no longer here. Now, there's a body here, but your soul and your spirit is, is gone. That's, that's with Jesus. So wherever you're going to spend eternity, that's where that next breath happens. Now, if you happen to have made the wrong choice along the way, you know where eternity is for you. That's where that takes place at that point, too. So uh, it, it's, uh, I talk to people that are worried about dying. They, they get uh, in that, uh, that mode. And, and you and I don't need to worry about that. We really don't. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, to, to use a phrase that that great old theologian Woody Allen used, he said, I'm not afraid of dying. He says, I just don't want to be there when it happens. Not going to happen, Woody. But uh, Paul has this desire. He has a desire to depart. He said, I would, I would just as soon be gone because I know if I'm gone, then it, it's gained for me because I will be with Christ. I want to take just a few moments and, and tell you about uh, uh, one of our own here in the church. Uh, about uh, three weeks ago, most of you know Larry McDonald, or many of you know Larry McDonald. Uh, Larry uh, entered uh, hospice care, 
And uh, right now, um, he's just waiting for God to call him home. But uh, it's, uh, he's not afraid of what lies ahead because he knows that when he breathes his last, last breath here, the next breath is going to be with Jesus, and that's where he uh, would like to be. And many of you go, have, have stopped by his place, and you have said goodbye to Larry. Uh, and one of the things that uh, Larry's been, a, he's been a, in our church here for over 30 years. He's been a, uh, he's served in many different uh, areas from uh, deacon to uh, study school teacher to youth sponsor. He's, he has a desire to serve the Lord and he would be serving the Lord right now. He actually is, he just doesn't, sometimes he's not aware of it because if you've stopped by to visit Larry and encourage him, usually you come away and, and you're encouraged because of Larry. He knows where he's at. He knows what's going to happen, and he will encourage you. And it's, it's amusing because if you say, Larry, we're praying for you, you know what he says? Don't pray me out of heaven. He, he's, ready to, he's ready to go. But uh, about, uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago, uh, Pastor John and I went over because Larry and Betty have not been able to be here for some time. So Pastor John and I went over and we administered communion for Larry and, and Betty. And we had a sweet time just uh, uh, sitting around in a circle praying for Larry and Betty and then uh, also uh, taking communion and uh, encouraging them. And, and Larry is uh, he's encouraging, he's encouraging to other people. You see what's happening in Larry's life right now? He's still bearing fruit because you come away feeling good that you stopped and feeling bad that sometimes you whine over some of the small things that, that you and I whine over. But it, it's a, he's in a good place right now because he's ready to go. Uh, he knows where he's going. And he knows that the Lord is waiting for him. It's going to come get him soon. Just like all of us. You know, the, the thing that, that, that's happening right now is that uh, if, if you're here today, and I assume that most of you are in body, but if you're here today, God's not done with you yet. This is his grace that allows us to be here. He's, not, he's still working on us, each and every one of us. So you say, well, I haven't really been um, bearing a lot of fruit. Well, start it. Start bearing fruit. If you haven't, it's not that difficult to do. You know, you're thinking of others. By the way, if you, if you see my wife, she may still have a spot left that you can help in the, the team care ministry. It's a great ministry. So there's where we're at with, with uh, I, I just wanted to share that with, uh, with you about Larry in case you, you weren't aware. But it's, it's amazing when you talk to people that uh, uh, are on the tail end of, of their journey and they love the Lord. And they're waiting for the Lord to take them. And they're excited about that. That's what Larry's excited about right now, is that the Lord's going to come and take him. And from that point, you know, there's no, uh, there's no more pain. There's no more tears. There's no more suffering. Uh, and he's waiting for a new heaven and a new earth and a new body. That'll be coming along. Now, back to Paul. This is a decision that, that Paul is perplexed about because He's not about himself. He's about others. He's about helping others, about serving others. And he has this, this whole Philippian group that he's been preaching and teaching to. And he's concerned about them. He's concerned that if, if he leaves, somebody doesn't step up and, and, and take over and continue the preaching, the teaching, and the serving. It, that's the way you and I should be. Is uh, Am I doing my part? Am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I doing what God has called me to do where he's put me? Are you busy for Christ where you're at? That's what it should be about. That's what it should be about. Remember, Paul's life philosophy is centered on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the center of his life. So no matter what happens to Paul, he wants to glorify Christ, whether in death or in living. And he says, if, if, if I die, then I, I know that it's, it's much better for me. If I live and I, I can go on and, and teach, it's much better for you. 
But God's name goes forth. That's, that's the good thing about this. So I ask you to think about uh, fill in a blank. And if I said, for me to live is what? What would you write? What would you write about your life, about where you're heading, about where you're at now, about what you're doing, what you're involved in, what's important to you. Are you all about bearing fruit? Are you all about serving Jesus? That's what you signed up to do. If you're here and you're following him, it's serving Jesus. And we all serve him in a little different way, which is a neat thing. There's nothing that's prettier than a healthy church when everybody is helping. Not everybody can do the same thing. We don't have room for that. But everybody can do something to show that you're a part of the body of Christ. And that's what we are. We're part of the body of Christ. So I don't know what you put in there. I don't know what you put in there. For me to live is what? You ask yourself, so what am I living for? Really, what am I living for? Am I living for things that don't count? In the scheme of things, what will they mean years from now? What will they mean after I'm gone? And if you're not living for Christ the way that he wants you to, there's not a better time to, to, to get at it than, than to just make your mind up that I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to start today and make that decision. Lord, you've been so good to me. You have blessed me so richly. How can I do less? John tried to sing that some time ago. It's an old, old song. And just old people like us would know that. Uh, he said, how could I do less than give him my best after all he's done for me? After all he's done for me, how could I do less than give him my best after all he's done for me? After all he's done for you, what are you doing for him? How are you living? And what are you living for? Let's stand and be dismissed. And we pray. Remember, I have two minutes to pray, to, to dismiss you according to stay with, with the thing here. Let's pray. Father, how we thank you for these words that we've read. Thank you for the record of Paul that he writes while he's in prison. And he makes a statement, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Lord, would that be true of each and every one of us? that our desire would be to live for you, to live all out, to be all in, to be completely committed, to have you be the center of our life, Lord. Lord, we love you. You've done so much for us. You've put up with so much. And the most exciting thing, Lord, is nobody knows us like you do, and yet you still love us. That's great, Lord. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. And Lord, I would ask that uh, as these words have gone forth, if there's a heart that's been challenged, uh, that today would be the day that they would start living for you more than they ever have before. Because we know, Lord, one of these days you're going to call us home. And are we going to be able to stand in front of you and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or are we going to have to hang our head in shame because we didn't live all out for you. Oh, we'll still be in heaven, but there won't be many rewards because our life was lived completely for us in amusement, and we chased things that were just temporary. Help us, Lord, to chase the things that count for Jesus. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks. You are dismissed. I'm not going to walk down that aisle and shout to you, but uh, I'll make my way out there. <laughs>